Good morning, beloved. <laughs> How many are encouraged by the testimonies? Okay, God is so good and we are so fathered. So today, the iPad isn't charged. Who is responsible for charging the iPad? <laughs> okay, so I got a message from... Uh, so last night, I was doing my notes and everything. And for the first time, I decided that I'm going to get a printout. So I messaged my mom in the night because she's come back from the US. So I messaged her saying that, mom, get a, uh, can you get a printout? Okay, so in the morning, I said, today I'm going to have a printout in front of me. Mom wakes up in the morning, gets the printout, and then before I'm about to head out of the house, Hebron calls me and says, Priya, have you charged the iPad? I said, I don't even know if it's with me. He's saying, then today you're going to need notes because the iPad is not charged. And I was like, yeah, I think the Lord already knew it. And, uh, you know, in small, small things like this, like these, I realized that we are so fathered, that God goes before us, and he knows everything what's going to happen tomorrow. Oh, the iPad is not charged. So, and so how did I know? Did God audibly speak to me? No, by the impulses of your heart. You're led in all things. So 99% of the time when God is speaking to you, you won't even know it. It'll just be a desire that he puts in your heart. And that is the Lord as a son of God. Okay? So today's word is uh, yesterday I was on set and uh, I met somebody. And they were telling me, uh, you know, you put up posts of, uh, you have a church or I want to come to your church. So, and then she started describing the church that maybe she's gone to, like some building. Uh, you know, and it's so beautiful architecturally. I said, well, if you come to ours, there's nothing architecturally beautiful, but it's very different. So she said, yeah, and I believe in the manifestations. I said, what manifestation? She, you know, that you declare and then you get certain things. I said, no, I said, uh, when you come here, I'll introduce you to your heavenly father. Okay, and uh, I realized that um, the devil takes something of God and perverts it. Do we have the I am's in the word? Yes, we do have it, but it originated from God. And now it's gone in the world and people are doing all of these things and the weight is on them. That if they don't do it tomorrow, then what's gonna happen? So I just told her, I said, uh, I said, no, I'm gonna talk about the father and tell you about the father. And I told her, I said, do you know that there's a heavenly father who loves you? He's crazy about you and he's got it all figured out. So when you come, you're going to, uh, I'm going to introduce, you're going to learn more uh, about him. I'm going to show you him. And she was just, just staring at me and she didn't know what to, what to say. And I was talking about the simplicity of a father and son relationship. Okay. Uh, you know, when you become, when all of y'all have children, okay, the father has all of the inheritance. Why will he give all the inheritance to the child? just because the child is his. Is the child waking up in the morning and doing the I am's? Having pictures, manifestation book, put pictures, and then if I see this picture, if I see this house long enough, dad will give it to me. If I say it long enough, all of these things, dad will give it to me. No relationship, lot of work, okay? And so let's go, uh, so I'm gonna go into, let's just get into the word. Okay, 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the message of the cross, can we have the board up? I'm just going to have some referencing from the board. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So today, I'm going to talk about what the wisdom of God looks like. Not necessarily I'm going into the depths of what the wisdom of God is. But just in general, I want to take one thing that the wisdom of God says, and it's the one thing that you do that is just going to bear so much fruit for you. Okay? Beloved is awake, alive, sharper than a two-edged sword. Okay? Okay, so let's get into the word. For the message of the cross, that means the preaching of the cross, is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. What is it that God thinks that even as you're listening to the word, that you are getting saved or that very circumstance that is ahead of you or is greater than you, that, that appears to be greater than you, just by hearing the word, it's going to be under your feet. Okay? Now see this. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing 
the understanding of the prudent where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this age has not god made foolish the wisdom of this world for since in the wisdom of god the world through wisdom did not know god it pleased god through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe for jews request a sign and greeks seek after wisdom greeks were the scholars i went to ephesus i saw this big library there is because the greeks were all about knowledge and they thought the more they can read and read books that they will understand god okay and god so it's saying that the jews seek a sign show us a sign who god is and the greeks go after knowledge trying to get knowledge to understand the mysteries of god and god is saying i'm not going to use any of this it's by the foolishness of the cross that you get saved okay of the message preached that you get saved now see this uh, but we preach christ crucified to the jews a stumbling block and to the gentiles foolishness but to those who are called that is you and me both jews and greeks christ the power of god and the wisdom of god because the foolishness of god is wiser than men and the weakness of god is stronger than men let's read that again because the foolishness of god is wiser than men and the weakness of god is stronger than men okay let's go to the next verse 26 <clears throat> for you see your calling brethren that not many wise according to the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise and god has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty that the base things of the world and the things which are despised god has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence do you know what flesh means flesh doesn't necessarily mean this flesh means the word flesh in greek in the bible actually means anything done without the aid of god that means anything done without dependency on him flesh is everything that says that you know i've got it and i'm going to do this or i'm going to save myself okay and so god is saying so that no flesh can glory in his presence but of him you are in christ jesus who became for us wisdom from god and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written he who glories let him glory in the lord god has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise what did god do with moses god told moses moses i'm going to lead my children out of egypt into the promised land moses tells god look i can't speak god tells moses don't worry when you go before pharaoh i am going to give you what you're going to speak don't don't worry about it moses still thinks no i think i i need help and that's why god calls aaron and then god tells moses i'm going to do all of these miracles he's like i have nothing and then god just looks at moses and says what do you have he's saying i have a stick and then god is like the stick is enough give me the stick and do you think everything is in the stick do you think there's anything in the stick who is go going to be the one who is doing all of the things who is it the father your rest is that the father is doing all of those things what about jericho god tells how did the children of uh, israel finally enter the promised land god tells them you're going to go you're going to cross the jordan there are these big walls and then god is telling them you're not going to go and take any weapons god just tells his children you're going to circle the walls seven times and just praise me have all the praise and worship leaders ahead and you're going to shout on the seven time just make a very loud noise and the walls are going to fall down what just go round the walls and shout 
no fighting, no planning strategy, how we are going to get the, these big Amalekites out of the land. God does not need man's wisdom. So that in the end you will say, it had nothing to do with me, it had all to do with him. So it says that your rest is not in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. That's why God chooses to do foolish things to confound the wise. And in the foolishness and the simplicity of God, he did something. There's another time when the children of Israel were in the promised land. Now God has already given the promised land and some enemies come to attack them. So Jehoshaphat is the king that time. And so now Jehoshaphat knows that we are such a small nation. We cannot defeat these armies that are coming against us. So what does Jehoshaphat do? He tells his whole nation, let's just go before our God. Because we can't fight this in our own understanding. And he was a wise man because he's not doing any planning. How are we going to fight this? They just go before the Lord. They fast and pray. And then a word comes from God saying that you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand still, sit still and see the salvation that I will bring for you. And so did God tell them to do something? Yeah, he told Joseph, I want you to go to war. Go out where, they have, where they've called you, go out. So all of Israel, all of them gather and they go out. And guess what happens? You know the story. When the enemies were coming to fight them, there were two, two different groups of enemies. The two different groups got confused. It says God put confusion in the camp. They fought each other and they died. And so this... Jehoshaphat goes with all of his, his nation and they just go there and they see everyone is dead. And then God told them, I've got you here to just take the spoil. That means they got rich to take all the gold and everything that was left there. So imagine the enemy came against God's chosen ones and they got richer. And when they looked at it, they realized they did not need to bank on their wisdom, man's wisdom, but God's wisdom. Because God's wisdom is far greater than man's wisdom. He does things in foolish ways, in simple ways to confound the wise. So you don't need to be strategically planning all things and how is all of this going to work out? I'm not resting on my wisdom. I'm resting on God's wisdom. Okay? When Adam sinned, I told you when Adam partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he went into a logic mind. And why did he partake when God clearly told Adam, don't eat out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because the day you eat out of it, death is going to come in. But what did Adam do? He began to think for himself, instead of allowing that somebody else had already thought for him. He, be he began or he tried to be his own savior. Let's say like that. And then you know what happens. The devil comes and tells Adam, no, no, no. If you eat out of this tree, you'll become like God. So there were two voices. God's voice said, nope, not good choice for you. And the devil's voice. Devil is called in the Bible an accuser and a slanderer. Do you know what a slanderer is? Slander is painting a false image of somebody, throwing dirt on somebody. So what the devil did is painting a wrong image of the father to Adam. And because he slandered and now Adam hears instead of God's voice, his dad's voice, he hears the devil's voice. The Bible says, to whom you obey, that one slave you become. And because the devil, the Adam heard the devil's voice, all of mankind fell into a cycle of sin and death. All of creation and everything started dying. Okay? And now we've fallen into the cycles and patterns and there's a wisdom of the world that comes and even everyone that you speak to about any situation, they'll give you the wisdom of the world. And then you sanctify and you come out of the wisdom of the world and you come into the wisdom of God. Okay? And when you go by God's way, his wisdom always leads to life. Okay, I'll give you an example. So last week I was um, 
I had this thing about work, okay? I had uh, made some uh, uh, costumes, and um, in my thing, I'm pretty much just listening to my boss. So if whatever my boss wants, I want to keep him happy. So there came a little um, someone, and fashion is something where everyone can have an opinion, what the person should wear or what color someone should wear, and it's very subjective. So I'd already made some 15 uh, you know, outfits, and then suddenly, um, my boss, you know, the celebrity that I work with, goes on the set and someone says, hey, I don't like this particular fabric. And it's tweed and it's thick material, okay? And he just put it in this person's ear. And now she is the, she is the creative head of the show. She's like, Priya, she just messages me, I don't think you should make uh, tweeds anymore. I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, I go to my dress room and see, I have got 15 costumes all made in tweed. And now the creative head has told me, don't use tweed anymore. So I'm just thinking about it, and I'm like, how is this possible? And I got irritated. So I was like, no, he's told me, uh, you know, my boss, I mean, the, he's told me to make tweets. And then she goes up to him and says, um, you know, I don't think you should be wearing tweets. And she puts a thought in his head. Later on, I get a message saying, Priya, OK, no checks. We're not going to do anything. And I'm just going on the whole Saturday. This happened on a Saturday. I'm going on saying that the boss has told me now no, and the creative head has told me no, and I've already made so many things. And it's a commercial issue, because I've done so many things. And she's like, oh, you didn't come to me for approvals. And I've never really gone to her for approvals before, OK? I've, I've gotten my fabrics checked with uh, the DOP, the director of photography. That's what's important. But now this is a, a, an aesthetic choice, and someone tells me no. So the whole weekend, I was like a bit, uh, you know, thoughts were coming in. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? Because I didn't really go to her for approvals. Technically, I should have. And now my boss is saying he doesn't want to wear. He's like the main guy. What should I do? And uh, even when I messaged him, can we just check it out? He's like, no, we'll go with all planes. So Saturday goes. Sunday, all the thoughts are coming to my head to reason the next day when I'm going to meet him, I'm going to have a discussion. What should I say? What should I do? And on Sunday, this is what I did. I took no thought. Even when the thoughts were coming, I just decided I'm not going to reason and analyze what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do. Take no thought. The Bible says, take no thought. Sons, don't think because the father is thinking for you. OK? So this is what I did. And then it says, the Bible says, pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Those who are persecuting you, pray for them. The last thing I wanted to do is pray for her. I want coconut fall on your head. <laughs> and so, but now this is, what I'm trying to tell you is, this is the wisdom of God. Where will you find the wisdom of God? In the word. So God is not foolish to tell you pray for your enemies because there's something in there when you do that. So what I did was I lifted her up and I said, I'm not, first I'm not going to think of what I'm going to say tomorrow. I'm just going to go and show up. And I am just, I lifted her up and I began to pray for her. That's it. The next day I go, <clears throat> okay, let's read one verse more and then I'm going to tell you what happens, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Verse 6, however we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What is this wisdom? I'll come back to the testimony. If the devil knew what would happen in crucifying Jesus, he would have never crucified Jesus. That's what it's talking about. Because before the Holy Spirit used to come on one person, 
and then if they messed up the holy spirit would leave but after jesus died and rose again the holy spirit came upon everybody the the gospel is in the seed the message of the gospel is in the seed an apple seed you put it in the ground when the apple seed dies it produces many apples jesus is called the seed when the father sent him he went to the ground he died through his death and resurrection come about many just like christ's sons of god that's why it's saying that this was the wisdom of god that the devil never understood had he understood it he would have never crucified because then jesus just multiplied okay now see this it says here but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him but god has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world that means not the wisdom that is from the world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god so how does god reveal the things that belong to us by his spirit what does the holy spirit do the holy spirit is called the spirit of truth he takes of what is mine and will declare it to you that's why i said first comes truth then comes life okay now see this verse 13 these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man the sensual man that means someone who is going by what they see touch feel the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him foolish what is it you're going to go round the building seven times and then blow and say hey and the building is going to come down the natural man does not understand or perceive the things of god because they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he who is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one for who has known the mind of the lord that we may instruct him but we have the mind of christ say i have the mind of christ jesus wore the thorn of crowns for you died for this mind the adamic mind so that now you can wear his crown the helmet of salvation and now you have the mind of christ do you know a helmet if you wear a helmet can you hear when people are honking if this helmet covers everything okay not like apna earthly helmets that have the little ear open when you have a proper helmet can you hear can you hear any of the outside clutter so when god is saying you have the mind of christ a helmet of salvation it's to block out all the voices from your surroundings your rest comes from inside you're not going to hear from outside you're going to hear from inside out that's why it's a helmet so you don't need to hear the voices of the world okay now see this so <clears throat> james 3:13 the wisdom that is from above so god describes what god's wisdom looks like okay now see this who among you is wise and intelligent let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with the gelt- gentleness and humility of true wisdom but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not be arrogant and as a result in the defiance of the truth this spiritual wisdom is not that which comes down from above but is earthly natural and even demonic for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist there is disorder and every evil thing and morally degrading practice now see this verse 17 but the wisdom from above is pure 
is peace loving in another translation it says god's wisdom is peaceable that means in all things it will go for peace okay then it says it's gentle it's reasonable it's willing to listen or in another translation it says it's willing to yield it yields it's willing to listen full of compassion and good fruits so i looked at this it said willing to yield that means so what i did the next day i was like i'm going to go and actually just apologize so i had like i had to get three people to say yes to me three people imagine my own boss is saying no the creative director is saying no and this other person is also on and how do i get all of them to be on the same page with me so the wisdom of god yields okay is it says that it's willing to listen so i go the next morning the first thing i did on monday morning now now i have not thought about anything what i'm going to say how i'm going to defend nothing because that all comes from the world i decided i'm just going to show up and then whatever i speak and do it's all christ in me because i'm not going to try and go by logic i'm going to use god's wisdom okay so god told me take no thought god said pray for your enemies i prayed god's wisdom says yield so i just went i hugged one of the girls i said hi i like the idea what you're saying and you know when we are going forward uh, this this and i just told her what we can do she said oh cool we'll discuss it at lunch i said yeah cool i go i see my boss in front and now i see this uh, other girl okay this my creative director and so i put my shoulder and i said uh, you know i like what you said about tweets and everything but i've already done it so how about after you know he's already won everything and then we will do it and i'm planning to show you know so all what i've done and we'll see and she's like okay no no we'll we'll wait we'll see if i like it and everything and she's still going on about it so i'm still like my heart is just going like you know this better get resolved the show gets over the first episode gets over i go to the vanity i go and keep all my collection there few things that he had said no i just go and keep it there now i in my heart i was like i'm just going to make him see it okay that's it and he he had told me yes to that at least i'll see it and then now imagine i just want to show him right now i decided i'm going to go take her as well what take her the one who is against you so that they will both say no to you but i just felt the wisdom of god yields and so i prayed for her i'm just going to go and take her with me for this meeting so i call her i said uh, you know i want you to come with me for because i'm showing him all of the things so why don't you also join me we both go in the vanity he is standing there she is standing there and then suddenly out of her mouth come praises for me and my work and then both of them go yeah this is good i think this i don't like but i will wear this for you and within a few seconds everything got established and they both agreed to wear everything that i had designed now imagine the wisdom of the world would say she is against me let's go and take him on the corner and like talk about why this is good and you know she's against me or whatever and i need to defend the truth but i took both of them i took the very enemy what looked like the enemy just in front i yielded and the very person who was against me became for me god can twist and change everything and bring praises out of the people who are very against you i'm just saying you do not need to bank on the man's wisdom God's wisdom is far more superior than man's wisdom. That's why it says the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. Okay? So I've always realized and I encourage you all just go by what God is doing. He said take no thought. So the whole day I just when everything was coming to say how am I going to say what will I say what will I tell her what will I tell him? and to get three people i just stepped out of that i just took no thought i don't know i'm not going to plan analyze i'm just going to go show up and tomorrow whatever i do it's christ 
before going into the vanity, oh, I'm going to bring her as well. What? Why? I don't think it's a good idea. I don't care. I'm just going to take her. I just blindly took her. And then she landed up, they both landed up singing praises for me. And it was all good. I came out, I was so happy. Okay. So let's look at John 6, 29. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. What? Believe in Christ, the work of God? Looks like foolishness. What? Just believe in Jesus. Yes. John 17. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. What is eternal life? Not long life. Long life is a benefit of knowing your father. But eternal life is actually just coming back to the one who made you. Okay? So, I want to talk about the wisdom of God, that God says, through the foolishness of preaching, and hearing you are saved and that's why I tell you just come and hear the word hear and hear and hear the wisdom of God how do you get someone saved just speak and let them hear and what is it that I'm hearing that things are changing in my life the wisdom of God okay so faith comes by hearing and the hearing by the word of God. In Greek it says hearing by the word of Christos. That means it means faith comes by hearing the new covenant sonship. It doesn't come from Moses. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of Christ. Okay? How does fear come? Fear comes the same way. By hearing, hearing everything from the reports of the world that's why the bible says in matthew 12 34 out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so what are you filling your heart with i remember i had this dream once i shared this recently i saw people there was shallow water and there was deep water i think i shared it last week i saw people drowning in shallow water so many people were in shallow water and they were dying. And then I saw people in deep water and these people, they were just floating on the water. And so I asked God, I said, why are people in shallow water dying? And in the deep water, it should be the opposite, that they should drown there. He says, this is the word of God. People in the shallow water die is because they don't have the word in them. But in the deep water, the word is so much that now the word is holding them is that they are lying and resting on the word and the word is holding them and that's what it is to you out of the abundance of the heart that means whatever you're filling your heart the mouth is speaking so what should you be filling your heart with God's word that's why in COVID time we had so much of God's word that even when COVID showed up because if your sons kept coming the word was so much that COVID was so small. Okay? It's like this. To someone, let me draw this. Can everyone see this? Everyone can see this? Okay, we'll get it. Um, can you see this? Can everyone see that? So I've drawn a circle and a man outside the circle. The circle is bigger. And then I've drawn another small circle and the guy is bigger. What is the difference? To one, the circumstance is greater than who he is. To another, who he is is greater than the circumstance. You are here. Both are supposed to be here. It's just one's revelation. He gets scared. He doesn't see himself greater. Yesterday in the evening, I was talking to somebody and someone gave me a prognosis of somebody. 
said, oh, this is cancer. The first thing that comes to your heart, it does this. <laughs> okay? And the minute that happened, I just caught it and I was like, one second. Uh, this thing, I am greater than this. Okay? This is about somebody. I said, a son is greater than this. And so you don't go and do later on son and start quoting scriptures. Right then when you hear it, in small things you take dominion. So the minute it came to my ears, I was like, oh, this is greater. I am greater than, than what this is. This is under my feet. Is because everything for a son is greater. What did we talk on Bible study on Wednesday? The Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. You can't destroy something if something is greater. You can only destroy when you are greater. The Son of God was manifested, it says, to destroy the works of the devil. You're in Christ, all things are under your feet. You're not looking for protection. In fact, wherever you go, you are protection. Okay? So, see this. <clears throat> Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor, si nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. What is this, the law of the Lord? This is not like the law. It's talking about the word of God. Okay? It's saying here that he who delights in the word, he meditates on it day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper, whose leaf shall not wither. That means in all times, you are forever overcoming in all things. Okay? John 18. I love this. Verse 33. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. How do you hear God's voice? How do sons hear God's voice? You don't hear it with your head. For sons, it will bear witness. There's something about what you said, what you did, it bears witness. Jesus says, I came to be witness, to witness the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Okay? Now see this. My sheep hear my voice. John 10, 27. And I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they know me. Just say, I know my father, and my father knows me. The wisdom of God doesn't look to self. The wisdom of God looks to his strength. Not in your strength, in his strength. Okay? So, are we sons who are just hearers of the word? A son is a hearer and a doer of the word. This one is blessed in what he does. But how will you do if you don't hear? 
That's why we always give emphasis, even on when people want to talk to me privately or personally, I just say, honor the word above me. Go to beloved, hear the word. And in the word, if you honor the word, then whatever you think you'll get answers from me on the phone, you'll get it through the word. Because now you banked on the Holy Spirit to give it to you. And what happens? Your relationship gets built up. And 99% of the time, I would say not even 99, 100% of the time when they do that, they've already had all their everything through the word. Okay? Because the word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Okay? Now see this. What does it say in Matthew 7.24? Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I, liken, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Is he hearing? Is this guy hearing? Yeah, it says, whoever hears these sayings of mine, and does them. I will liken him to a man, a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Verse 26, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. It says here, the one who hears my sayings, and does them, whereas there's another son who hears the sayings, but does not do them. So one can say, Priya, I'm just, I'm, I'm coming and I'm hearing your word, hearing your word, but nothing is happening. It's not about hearing. Are you applying the word? And you don't apply the word in big things. You apply the word in small things. In small things. You take dominion in small things. How did I get three people to say yes to me? Apply the word in small things. The foolishness of God, oh, you said don't think. Okay, I'm not going to think. Then you said, pray for my enemies. No. <laughs> she came against me. I don't want to pray for her. She said bad things. This is the very one I gave the gospel to. It's coming against me. Okay? And I'm like, logically, it just doesn't make sense to you. Why should I pray for this person? And then, take this person in front of the boss. She is the one against me. She'll to agree. And now, if one outfit should be approved, all will get disapproved. But just stepping out of the wisdom and the logic of man, coming out of the mind of Adam, into the mind of God, I'm a peacemaker, the wisdom of God yields. Let me not even think this. Let me just blindly do what my father has told me to do. And the foolishness of man, I had the wisdom of God manifest. Okay? Now see this. So one is a hearer and a doer this one is blessed. This one's house stands. So just say, I am a hearer and a doer of the word. Amen. Matthew 13. Okay. The wisdom of God for singles, for married people, not for singles. When you get married, live independently. The wisdom of God just says that. Don't do the joint family thing, going and living with your whole household. I've had 99% of couples when I counsel them. I see they didn't do what I told them. They get married, they're living with the in-laws. I said, no, God's word says, be independent. No, but they're nice. Gone ahead. Three years later, all the kitchery, the mess that has happened is, is interference from outside. Just simply do the wisdom, what God has said. Just blindly walk in it. Okay? See this. Matthew 13. We're going to talk about the soil the heart okay later that day jesus left the house and sat by the lake shore to teach the people soon there were so many people surrounding him that he had to teach sitting in a boat while the large crowd stood on the shore then he spoke many things to them in parables saying behold a sower went out to sow and as he sowed some seed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured it some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth 
and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth but when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they wither away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked it and others fell on good ground and yielded a crop some a hundredfold some 60 some 30 he who has ears to hear let him hear does everyone have ears but then god is saying he who has ears to hear let him hear hearing does not come with your head hearing comes inside out in your spirit when god speaks and his disciples came and said to him why do you speak to them in parables he answered and said to them because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it has not been given now see this for whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance what does this mean but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him whoever has more will be given and he will have an abundance but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him you know the word of god is so precious it's like the parable of the talents remember there's a guy who gave talents a king who gave one coin one coin one coin and then he came back and he saw what people did with that coin so everyone who multiplied it they got more things but there was this one guy who didn't he just kept it didn't do anything and then god says i can't do anything with you because you didn't do anything with it that's what he's saying when you take the word the little that you have and when you apply it more will be given to you you'll have an abundance but if you heard it and just sat on it didn't do anything even what you have it says is not given to you i remember once uh, heeral first time i met her in the early years and uh, she was working in a company 8 years yeah 8 years she was working in this company for the longest time and then she said you know i don't like this or whatever she didn't have time for the lord and all i said uh, and then she shared with me a dream that she had so i said uh, i think god wants you to quit okay this is not for you and uh, she said yeah i know and i keep getting this again and again i said yeah so he's telling you to quit i met her after 2 3 months he still is still in the job i said what are you doing she said i don't know i'm feeling you know foggy i don't feel like god is telling me next and all i said yeah because he's not going to speak if you don't do the first thing and then i told her i said if you don't quit get ready you might get fired she's been in this company for 8 years suddenly she messages me priya they fired me <laughs> i was like yeah is because god is very serious about you when god told abraham get out of your land i'm taking you to another land if abraham had not stepped out god would not show him the next piece of the puzzle god works god speaks you step out you do it god speaks you'll see it again then you'll see it again that's how god works his relationship with you is progressive and why does he do that is because he wants to cultivate relationship i spoke my son did now i'll go tell him more i'll give him more increase that's how god god speaks okay so to him who has more will be given to him who does not that means you took it you just sat on it just hearing he's saying even what you have is taken away god always multiplies everything in the kingdom of god grows whatever you hear in small things apply it in the little things the doing of the word is not so much doing it's doing is actually not forgetting in the small things don't forget it's like when she called me yesterday in the small things i didn't forget when the thing came to my ears oh it's about somebody else oh, i don't care oh this is i am greater than this the sun christ is greater than this this is under my feet okay now see this although they will listen to me so therefore i speak to them in parables verse 13 because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear nor do they understand and i and in them the prophecy of isaiah is fulfilled which says although they will listen to me they never fully perceive the message i speak the prophecy of isaiah describes them perfectly 
although they listen carefully to everything i speak they don't understand a thing i say they look and pretend to see but the eyes of their hearts are closed their minds are dull and slow to perceive their ears are plugged and are hard of hearing and they have deliberately shut their eyes to the truth otherwise they would open their eyes to see and open their ears to hear open their ears to hear that means where is the hearing coming from open their eyes to see do you think they don't have physical eyes what is god talking about and open their ears to hear the eyes of your heart the ears of your heart that's why we don't see and hear by our physical senses sons perceive all things by spirit you have a witness by the witness of the spirit you see by the witness of the spirit you hear everything is spirit inside out the devil works in the carnal realm in the flesh realm that's why the bible says the natural man the man who is going by his senses cannot understand the things of god because they are spiritually discerned okay now see this otherwise they would open their eyes to see and open their ears to hear and open their minds to understand then they would turn to me and i would instantly heal them verse 16 but blissful are your eyes for they see delighted are your ears for they are open to hear all these things many prophets and godly people yearn to see these days of miracles that you have been favored to see they would have given everything to hear the revelation you've been favored to hear was it Therefore hear the parable of the sower when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart this is he who received seed by the wayside but he who received the seed on stony places this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy yet he has no root in himself but endures only for a while for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word immediately he tr- tr- uh, stumbles okay let's talk about the first one anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart this is predominantly talking about the message of the cross okay but it's also like the other word that you're hearing it now it says he who does not understand it sons you have the spirit of understanding that's why when you simply open the bible just your act of opening it just say holy spirit i thank you that i'm not going to try and understand it through my head spirit of understanding you're with me you are opening up all things to me that's why we don't need head that's why i say just come and hear the spirit of understanding will open up things to you then it's a revelation okay look at this other one it says he who hears the word and he on stony places where the seed fell he hears the word he receives it with joy yet he has no f- root in himself but endures for a while for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word immediately he stumbles you came into the kingdom suddenly now your family members get all wondering what's happened you're talking about jesus jesus you're not doing the things that they've taught you and now comes a point where either you get influenced by them hassled by them and go away or you stand rooted because you've come to the truth okay look at this verse 22 now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful hearing the word the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches in this is busyness i told you as sons we sanctify time we just separate and sanctify it that means this is what you've decided this is i'm a son i'm going to sanctify this i have said it and so it shall be you don't allow distractions to come if you're getting too busy quit the job you'll get another one your father is very abundant to give you something that is restful but you've got to learn to say no the busyness of the world the deceitfulness of riches it says chokes the seed and makes it unfruitful i know so many sons who came into the kingdom the very thing that they wanted they got 
but then it became a distraction and now they've forgotten the very purpose for that word everything in your life is about the word of god and if you keep that in the center then god is able to add all things to you and they will remain as gifts don't start worshiping the gift whether it's a job whether it's a relationship or any other thing that god has added to you okay now see this and the word becomes unfruitful but he who receives seed on good ground say i am good ground is he who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces a hundred sixty and thirty when you put a seed in the ground if the seed keeps jumping from one place to another place can a plant grow what has to happen to the seed it has to stick it has to rest only when the seed rests in one place can it die and then a plant grow and produce 30 60 100 the bible says through patience you inherit the promises of god it's a place of rest it's the same way where rheumatoid arthritis left my body the seed was i'm a new creation is not in my nature to fall sick and first i was dancing around with that truth it was here it was there i, I take on the truth but i also believe other things that i can fall sick and then one day I just let that seed rest. That means I had made a decision. It's not going to move from here and here. It rests. It rests. It died. I said I believe this truth not to make it true. I believe this truth because it is the truth. And the day I rested, that seed rested, it popped and it bore fruit. And rheumatoid arthritis disappeared the word of god is a seed when it falls on good ground it rests and through rest comes fruit okay now see this james 1 19 so then my beloved brethren let every man be quick to hear slow to speak and slow to be impulsive for the impulsiveness of man does not produce the righteousness of God. That means there is a righteousness of God that's going to go and do something for you. If you go try and save yourself or if you go and try and defend yourself, he's not able to defend for you. But if you rest, are not impulsive, then God's righteousness is able to go and do for you something that you could never do for, my, for yourself. What went ahead, I stopped being impulsive. Just before that whole thing was happening, when I had to go and meet my boss, I put a story up and I put a poll. I put a little jacket up and I said, do you like this? I put it up on uh, Instagram. And, uh, you know, I was actually getting like 50-50, like half. I was like, and my director and all of them follow. I'm like, I don't know if this is a good thing I did or a bad thing, because now it, it, it shows that this is bad, like what I've designed. And then I'm messaging people, hey, go like it, like it. And some are messaging me saying, Priya, this is a rigged, rigged poll. Like a poll means let it be by choice. You're telling people, like it. And you know, I'm trying to go in my own wisdom at that time. And I was like, you know what? Doesn't matter. I'm not going to use my logic and my brain. And then I just decided I'm just going to bank on God's wisdom. I'm going to take, and I did whatever I did. And it, uh, his righteousness went forth and did something for me that I couldn't do for myself okay um, <clears throat> so the wisdom of God yields the wisdom of God is peaceful at the end result I had peace with everybody okay uh, verse 21 therefore lay aside all filthiness filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness receive with do you know what meekness is meekness is not timidity timidity doesn't come from the kingdom of God Meekness is strength under control. That's what the definition of meekness is. Strength under control. You can say, but you choose not to. You can do, but you choose not to. That's what rest is. It's a labor to rest. It's a labor to not think and to humble yourself and say, I'm not going to think because he's thinking for me. I'm not going to fight because he's fighting for me. 
It's a labor, it's a work to rest. Okay? Now see this. But be and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. That means the word is able to save the situation. I went, pray for your enemies, take no thought. The word implanted in me is able to save this situation. And it did. Okay? Verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving who? Others? Ourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, into the perfect law of liberty, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but he is a doer of the work, this one is blessed in what he does. Who is blessed in what he does? That means you hear the word, you see, but then you forget. But someone hears and then does. The doing part is not forgetting who you are. It says this one is blessed in what he does. Mom's testimony, she's standing in a line. She wants wheelchairs. Everyone is running for the wheelchairs. Okay, go take it. Take the wheelchair. Go. And then suddenly what happens? She waited. And then her wheelchair surpassed all the other wheelchairs. What was she saying in the end? It's not about getting fast. Rest gets you things faster. I had a dream once. I saw two roads. One tar road. You know a tar road? A black road with tar. And I saw one muddy road. And then I saw my car not take the tar road. And I felt like tar road, no potholes, it'll get faster. And then I saw my road, muddy road, and like here on their bumps. But then I saw on my road, the car was not touching, the, the wheels were not touching the ground. It was supersonic flying. And it was going faster. And then God told me, that is the wisdom of the world. And this is the wisdom of God. In God's world, in God's economy, when you rest, you go faster. But when you are doing things in your own effort, things are slower. I think I'm going to rest more. And maybe when I rest and I'm more patient, I will move faster. <laughs> Word for myself. <laughs> OK. Uh, so rest gets you things faster. So rest is where? Headrest. Mind is overworking. How do I get this? How do I, I get this person to do something? And then you just rest. Father, not me. You. Father, not me. You. Okay? The weight is not on you, sons. The weight is on him. Okay? John 16. Beloved's favorite verse. Everyone knows this. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, who has come? He will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin because they, what is the only sin the Holy Spirit convicts of? Whether you are in Christ or not in Christ. That's it. After this, he's not convicting you of sin. The devil convicts you of sin. If you're still getting convicted. What does he convict you of? Next verse. Of righteousness. Because why? I go to my father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. So what did I do when Gitu spoke to me and said something? I heard someone's report. I judged it. The ruler of this world has been judged. Okay? Verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. 
all things that the father has are mine therefore i said that he will take of mine and declare it to you okay let's go over this so i've just drawn out something adam fell in a rem tree of knowledge of good and evil the good fruit also leads to death the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they both lead to death okay adam's mind reasons has logic adam's mind puts in man's effort everything is by sweat and labor you've come out of one rem and you've come into an other rem now you live in christ your rest and my rest is that we are fathered that our whole life how good it is that we are not putting pictures on pages and seeing that things come to our life i thank god that somebody else has done all of that for me and written every page of my life and done everything so that it says in ephesians that we are his workmanship his creation prepared beforehand so that we can walk in the very things that god has laid out for us the works of god where someone has done everything for you and you're walking into his realities which have already been created for you okay in christ sons are led by the spirit the impulses of your heart that means god speaks sons hear sons see sons feel everything by spirit it's called leading it's called impulses of your heart his spirit bearing witness with my head my physical eyes my physical ears his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of god so we hear each other through heart you'll know it that's why even among uh, in bilabar i always say when you're talking with others it's not the words go for the intention of the heart sometimes even when you are arguing with somebody or maybe your uh, you know parents can get overprotective about their kids and sometimes you see that's coming from a sense of fear and not necessarily why you came home late or maybe she thinks like what's happening and then it's not what you are speaking to them address that fear excuse me mom i am a son of god do you not know that it's still okay this can happen to others but not for the son and you address that fear and so jesus said even in the bible it says the word of god is discerning sharper than any two edged sword piercing between the division of soul and spirit of the thoughts and intentions of the heart so sometimes when i come and talking i'm not really seeing what you are saying to me i see the intention of the heart does it want to hear does it want to prove they are right or sometimes the heart is just wants to say that i love you and so they might be saying all these things that coming so wrong but they want to say like hey sorry and so we are going how do sons hear intentions of the heart okay then forget all the other things that were said sons rely on god's wisdom is god's wisdom is his wisdom his strength not your strength in all things we learn to rest more because it is finished and you are here in god's ways it all leads to life okay so how many received the word okay the focus of the word was the wisdom of god is telling you to hear and keep hearing and keep hearing that by the foolishness of hearing you are getting saved and in small things the wisdom of god says apply the word don't go by your logic just apply it in small things you will see life it leads to big things relationship is built in small things okay okay let's give a spiritual tithe just say father i am a son in your kingdom jesus you are my high priest and right now i give you a tithe a thanksgiving of all the increase that came to my soul and just begin to worship him oh rahada riya rabba shikla rada rabba father i just thank you for this word i thank you for what you spoke i thank you for the increase i just thank you father that everything that whoever heard father i just thank you this increase in your multiplying it in jesus name amen amen i'll give